Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. We begin with Allah's blessed name. Praise Him. We glorify Him. As He ought to be praised and glorified. We pray for peace and for blessings on all His noble messengers. And in particular, on the last of them all, the blessed Prophet Muhammad. Sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam, as we greet you with assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh on this the sixth day for us here in the Caribbean, the sixth day of the month of Jumali wa Akhira. With assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And we begin. Uh, today by reminding you that uh, those of you who are participating in this Zoom session can also participate at 2 o'clock, four hours from now, 2 o'clock this afternoon, that is Trinidad and Tobago time, when we'll have another Zoom session in which I will address the subject this ever increasingly important subject, tragic subject of the virus, the vaccine, the mustard, the market, the lecture itself, uh, and the introduction to take about 50 minutes. And then after that, we we'll have a session lasting more than an hour in which we'll be able to respond to the very important questions which will be posed from any part of the world, because you are experiencing the virus in different parts of the world, and your experiences are different. Uh, here in the Caribbean, we are still experiencing a light shower of rain, really. But I understand in Malaysia, the shower of rain is becoming heavier now. In Pakistan, it's going heavier. So don't forget, you can also join us and participate on Zoom at 2 o'clock this afternoon uh, for the session on the virus, the vaccine, the masjid, and the market. Now then, we return to our class. And this is class number five. And uh, today, we we look at the subject of the Quran and the return of the Messiah. We do this by asking this important question. How can Jesus, how can he be a sign of the last hour when he departed this world some 600 years before the last of the prophets of Allah was even born. The signs of the last hour cannot commence when there is a prophet of Allah still to be born. And so we conclude, logically so, the only way that Jesus, alayhi salam, can be a sign of the last hour is if there's something connected to him which has not as yet occurred, which did not occur during the time when he was with us here on earth. And the only great event connected with Jesus, alayhi salam, which has not as yet occurred, is his return to this world as prophesied by Nabi Muhammad alayhi salam. And so now we have to turn to this important subject, which is the sign of all signs of the last hour, and that is the return of the Messiah, Nabi Isa alayhi salam. When we do so, I have discovered something late in my life that no one has ever told me about. 
I had to discover it all by myself, all alone. And here is what I have discovered. And that is that on no subject has a greater effort been made by satanic forces to corrupt and to distort the meaning of the Quran and on this subject of the return of the Messiah to this world more than 2,000 years after his departure. It is a very and there has been a malicious, a satanic, and an evil attempt to try to distort and to corrupt the meaning of the Quran on the subject of the return of Nabi Isa. And the first evidence that we have discovered of this satanic effort to corrupt the meaning of the Quran was the bogus eschil on the verse of the Quran, which said, For in Nahu the Adam and his Surah to Zuchro, this eschil was uh, this bogus steel was inserted on the verse which was the most important verse of the whole Quran. On our the verse which told us that the Bihisar is a sign of the last. We have disposed of that bogus testimony. But if there are any of you attending this Zoom session who is still of the opinion that the Tashkil, which is not the one of Abdullah ibn Abbas, the Tashkil of Abdullah ibn Abbas, is and he, Nabi Isa Islam, he is most certainly sign of the last hour. The other Tashki that I have exposed and focused and fraudulent, the other Tashki says, no, no, no. It is that he, Nabi Isa Islam, he is the knowledge of the last hour. We have already given the proof that this is a this is an invalid verse of the Quran. Sorry, invalid uh, statement. That he, Nabi Isa Islam, is the hour, this is the knowledge of the hour. Because when we use the methodology of Tafsir al Quran, Bil Quran, we find several verses of the Quran which are ayat muhkaman, which contradict the statement that he, Jesus, will be the knowledge of the hour. Contradicted. And the Quran is non-contradictory. No verse of the Quran contradicts any other verse. We gave you the book already. And so now when the, those who are defending this Tashkil, when they try to find a way out of the difficulties, they say, no, 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 this is an ayah Mutashabiya, meaning we are allowed to interpret the verse. But wait a minute. Wait a minute. When we use the Tashkil of Abdullah ibn Abbas, we get an ayah mukhkama. 
فإنه لعلم للشعب This is an ayah muhkama It belongs to the very heart and substance of the Quran The Ummul Kitab And you are now giving us a substitute which is an ayah mutashabiyah The ayah muhkama stands at a higher level than an ayah mutashabiyah Ayat mutashabihat according to a zamak shari should be should be interpreted by using ayat so when you come to us to tell us no 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 actually means the interpretation is that his return is the knowledge of the hour <laughs> this is invalid you cannot interpret the course of the quran You say the verse of the Quran. You cannot interpret it when already ayat muhkamat have declared it to be invalid. And so we have disposed of that bogus tashkir. But if there are any of you attending this class who is still convinced that the tashkir that now obtains in all the printed copies of the Quran is correct, I give you enough time today. We postponed the whole class today to give you enough time today to argue your case and let the others decide whether you are correct or not. Does anyone want to speak? Can I take a sip of water? Oh, we don't have any students today? <laughs> All right. It seems that uh, there is no one who is in, uh, prepared to. Hello? Is there anyone present who is convinced that the Tashkil, which says, is correct and valid and wants to defend it? Anyone present? Okay. There's Assalamu no alaikum, Sheikh. And that's what everybody is in agreement. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Yes, go ahead. Who it is? Sheikh, my name is Nisar. I'm from Amsterdam. I'm calling from you Amsterdam. From? Amsterdam, okay. ne Netherlands. Amsterdam. Good. Yes. Go so ahead. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has taken the responsibility for protecting the Quran, right? And that is the reason why the copy of the Quran is same wherever wherever in the world you go. Just a minute. I hope you've done your homework. Because if you if you've not done your homework, then it's going to be difficult for you. I'm asking you, when the Quran was sent down to Muhammad al-Islam, was it sent down with any tashkil? Yes no. or no? No. 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 Go ahead. So but now, the, the but tashkil, now that, the but tashkil, now that, it, that's not, the tashkil was inserted by human beings. Yes or no? Yes, sir. Yes, it was. Therefore, the Quran, which is protected by Allah, does not include the tashkil. Yes or no? Yes, sir. No, it does not include. Therefore, there can be mistakes in the Tashkil. Yes or no? If there are mistakes in the Quran, then... If the Tashkil were introduced by human beings and is not protected by Allah, then the possibility exists that there can be mistakes in the Tashkil. Yes or no? Yes, sir. Yes, because human beings are not infallible. Only Allah is infallible. So a mistake can occur in this tashkil. Carry on. I'm listening to you. But, sir, then, then uh, uh, when Allah says that the Quran is a book, and it, a book is something that is in written form, 
then if Allah is protecting the book, then he will protect it in the written form as well. Okay, then what you're telling me, this is amazing, really, that Allah is protecting the Jashkil, and you just told me he's not doing it, and now you're telling me he is doing it. What is wrong? I expect you to be able to think. That's all I'm asking of you. You just said to me, that the Tashkeel is not protected by Allah. It is from human beings. It can be have it can have mistakes. And now you're telling me Allah is protecting it. What's wrong? I expect you to think. If the Darulum does not want to think, at least my students should think. All right. Is there anyone else who has anything to say? Okay. Uh, it's Muhammad from Manchester. Um, it's more, uh, I had a question that when you're studying the Quran, and I agree with you, uh, how do you study it in the way that you have looked at all the different types of tashkil historically so you don't miss anything, just from a student's point of view, research? I do not know. I do not know whether there are any more mistakes in tashkil. There could be. I have discovered so far only two. But I am not the first to have discovered it. There are others before me, long before me, who alerted me to it. This is one of them. And the other one is in connection with Dabbatul Ark. Where the Quran says that Dabatul Al would harm you, would injure you, would cause you injury. In uh, But when you go to the Tashkil in the Quran as it's written today, you do not find Taklimuhum, you find Takalimuhum, the Dabatul Al would speak to mankind. So I have alerted. I have been alerted by those who came before me about these two. And I came to the conclusion that both of these tashkils are bogus. And they are meant to corrupt uh, and distort our understanding of the Quran. And I've only begun the subject now. There's much more to, be come, to come in today's class and succeeding classes because what I have discovered late in my life, imagine this, in my old age I discovered it, no one ever told it to me, and I've never found it anywhere, anyone saying it. That there is a satanic effort at work, a malicious, a false and evil attempt at work to distort, to corrupt, and to block our meaning, the meaning of the Quran on the subject of the return of the Messiah. And I'm providing the proof. Part of the proof already came the bogus tashkil, and there's more in today's class. So yes, there may be more bogus tashkil, but I don't know them. I have to discover them. Any other question before we proceed? Assalamu alaikum. Can I speak? Yes. Hello. Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum salam. Go ahead. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Can I speak? This is Yasmin from State. Hello. Assalamu alaikum. This is Yasmin from State. From United States. Yes, Sheikh. Go ahead. Um, like you mentioned, Sheikh, that uh, nobody have ever taught you about this and you find it yourself. So we we are in the same state, like nobody ever taught us this, but we are learning from you. So this is something uh, very hard to digest, uh, to find out that the people who have worked so much, like I'm taking another class like Hulumul Hadith, and uh, we are learning so much from there that we appreciate the work they did they preserve for the ummah 
But right now, when we find out that the Tashkil itself has a lot of, uh, maybe not a lot, but where uh, the shaitanic stuff has intervened and corrupted the translation or the Tashkil. So, um, I mean, for us, it is really hard to digest how, what's happening. And um, uh, we are really trying our best to learn that if this is the one part of the Tashkil is like to, to unfold the, the situation in the world today. So it is like kind of corrupting our own knowledge. Like uh, as a Ummah, we are leading towards the wrong direction then. Uh, am okay. I right with that? Uh, before I um, respond to you, are you seeing the screen on Zoom? Am I blocking your screen? Can someone answer me? Are you seeing the screen? You're no, blocking it a little bit. We cannot. The screen is partially I'm blocked. I am, you can't see the screen because I'm blocking it, is that? Yes. 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 This is technology. I don't know how to get. Mm -hmm. I don't know how to get it from my laptop directly to the screen. I don't know how to do it. <laughs> you're gonna have to. You're gonna have to get the text uh, later on, okay? And read the text because the text is on the screen, and I have two laptops in front of me, and I don't know how to solve this problem. Okay. All right. So I'll read what is on the screen for those of you uh, who are on Zoom. Um, my answer to your question is this. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created us and has blessed us with a capacity to think. And if we do not use that capacity to think, to listen, and to rationalize, we are the ones to blame for that. Don't blame anybody else. Blame yourself. In Surah Al Mulk, here is this verse. We would not be in this fire of Jahannam today if we used to think and we used to listen. We wouldn't be in Jahannam today. So don't blame anybody else. Blame yourself. If you learn something from a Darulum, you learn something from another institution of knowledge, and you are convinced that it is correct, by all means accept it and don't bother what I'm saying. Once you are convinced that what they are teaching you is correct, forget me and forget my class and follow them. That is my answer to you. So on Judgment Day, you will say, I studied what they taught me, and I was convinced it was correct, and I'm prepared to accept whatever the consequences today. That is the only answer I can give to you, because on the end, at the end of the day, Allah gave you the rational faculty with which to be able to think and to come to a conclusion. And I am teaching, and other than teaching, and we have differences in what we teach. So you are the ones who will make a decision who is correct and who is not, okay? And whenever I give an opinion, I always say, I don't want you to accept my opinion unless and until you are convinced it is correct. My teacher taught me that way. My teacher never delivered, me, delivered knowledge to me like a box which has to be transferred from one generation to another uncritically, not at all. My teacher taught me to think independently. And only when I was convinced that what he taught me was correct would I accept it. And he was proud of that, proud of the way I studied with him. So now then, shall we proceed? Okay, now. Assalamu so, alaikum, yes, Sheikh. This is... Uh... Assalamu uh, alaikum, Shah. This is Roshan from Mauritius. MashaAllah, um, Roshan, who are you? <laughs> I, I, was, you? I haven't met you for 20 something years now. MashaAllah, go uh, ahead. 
That's correct. Yeah, that's correct. I was blessed to to be able to uh, talk to you and walk with you during your lectures. And yes, sell your in books. Toronto. Yes, Mashallah. Yes, sorry, ahead, and it was actually. So this is uh, coming from me. Um, I not a a scholar, and just coming from my thinking that. We received the Quran, like Rasulullah received the Quran in, in the sound form. Uh, basically, if you look at Musa, السلام, when Allah subhanahu wa talked to Musa, and it was in sound too. So Allah subhanahu wa talked to Musa, السلام, and Musa السلام, wrote it, wrote what Allah was, was speaking to him. Whereas uh, Muhammad sallallahu wasallam received the the wahi and the recitation in terms of sound. Now, no, wahi was not in sound. Wahi was not in sound. Only the recitation was in sound. Wahi came to the heart, and the kira or the recitation came to the ears. Go ahead, Mukhtar. Okay, so the recitation. Uh, came in 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 the form of sound. Now this is sound, yes. yeah. This is uh, I think um, the wisdom of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is telling us is because Rasulullah was illiterate, so he couldn't read and write. So the only way he could uh, receive the Quran was through his ear, and he, he had to no, understand no, no, those no, sounds. No, right. Not the only way. This is not the only way. There were two ways. The Quran came to him in two different ways, neither of which required him to be able to read and to write. The first way was wahi. Wahi is sometimes translated as revelation and sometimes translated as inspiration. And wahi comes not only to uh, the prophets of Allah, the prophet came to the mother of Musa, Islam. What he comes to the bee. What he is a means through which Allah sends what he wants to send. So what he, the Quran came in the form of what he, to the heart of the prophet, Islam. And that was not in the world of Sam. And then only, in, and that took 23 years to be completed. That what he, 23 years. The first revelation to come down was when he was 40 years of age. And the last came down when he was 63 years of age. So it took 23 years for the Quran to come down to him in the form of wahi. But the whole Quran, the whole Quran was recited to him in Ramadan during the nights of Ramadan uh, in the form of recitation. The, the recitation was being done through the medium of the angel Gabriel. But Allah says, it is I, I was reciting. And he was reciting through the angel Gabriel. I gave you the book already from Surah al -Qiyama. So there are two ways in which the Quran revealed the came to the Prophet One was Wahi to his heart, which took 23 years. And the other was recitation to the air, which, which came in the nights of Ramadan. And the whole Red Quran was completed in one month of Ramadan. Go ahead, Roshan. You are correct, Sheikh. Um, so my mistake. So I should have said that we we received the, the Quran through recitation. Is that correct? No, we did not receive it. We did not receive it, Roshan. Only he, only he, Nabi Muhammad, Allah recited it to him. Allah did not recite it, recite it to us. Allah recited it to him. But then after Allah recited it to him, Allah says, And when we have recited the Quran to you, to you, O Muhammad, 
Islam, you must follow our way of recitation. Okay? And the question now arises, what is Allah's way of recitation? But please read my book, The Quran and the Moon, because I've explained this in the book. You've not read the book as yet. It's on the website. Please download it. And go ahead. So how did Rasulullah transmit the Quran to the Sahaba? Oh no, we've already done all of this. <laughs> we've already done all of this, Roshan. We're repeating what was done previously. Go to my teacher's book, The Quranic Foundations and Structure of Muslim Society, and go to the first volume. And in the first volume, you see where Maulana Ansari has explained very plainly and clearly the method through which the Quran reached us from the Prophet. Okay? Inshallah. Okay. And uh, I just want to, to tell you that I agree with your, your explanation of this ayah. And I consulted various uh, translation and they all say the same thing. It's the sign, not, not the knowledge. So That's I right. just want to- He's not, yes. he's not the knowledge of the last hour, he's the sign of the last hour. Okay, shall we continue now? Or anybody yes. else has anything to say? Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Wa alaikum, uh, Sheikh, I'm Nialish from Pakistan. Pakistan, okay. Uh, so my question is, uh, uh, I totally agree with you that uh, the, uh, the word, uh, the word ilm, it means uh, knowledge and only Allah has knowledge about the last hour. Nobody else, not even Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa sallam and not even Prophet Isa uh, yes. Islam has the knowledge of, of the last hour. Yes. But sir, the copy of Quran which I have, it has an Urdu explanation and done by Ahmad Raza Brailvi. And, and he has interpreted the word ilm not as knowledge, but he has interpreted it rather as news. Like he is the news of the last hour. So if we see it like this, that when he'll, he'll return and he'll kill the Antichrist, the news channels would be around and all that. And it would become a news eventually, the biggest news right. in the modern world. Right. Are, and, you, are, you, are you convinced that uh, Ahmed Razak Barabi is correct? Are you convinced? I, no, no, sir. I'm not convinced. I'm, I just want your but, point of view on that. No, that I uh, already taught the subject. I have already taught the subject, my brother. I've already so said to you that there is a correct skill and there is a bogus skill. That's my word. A bogus skill. Ilmun Nisa is a bogus skill. Alamun Nisa is the correct skill. And this is the skill of Abdullah ibn Abbas. I've already done my work. So if you are confronted with Ahmad Raza Khan, who says that Il means khabar, news, and you are convinced that he is correct. By all means, you stay with him and forget what I've thought. Do not accept my views unless you are convinced I'm correct. How many times must I repeat that? Hello? Yes, sir. Yes, go ahead. Anything else? No, sir. I just uh, I just wanted to know that uh, whether this uh, this word only means knowledge or can it be interpreted as news as well? I have, I have already I have already I have already explained the subject. Now let me do it one more time. When Allah says in the Quran, "Wa innahu la alamun the word alam has a tashkil, which Abdullah ibn Abbas confirms, radiallahu ta'ala, that he accepts, this is the, his exception. Alamun lisa means that he, Nabi Isa alayhi salam, is the sign of the last hour. Good. This is an ayah muh. I'm saying this for 1,000 times. 
wa innahu la'alamun lis-sa'a this is an aya muhkama don't ask me what is an aya muhkama when i got it already I, have, I cannot repeat and repeat and repeat and repeat. Have some pity on me. I've already taught that. what is an ayah muhkama. This is Ummul Kitab. This is the heart of the Quran. And Abdullah ibn Abbas has given us an ayah muhkama. Wa innahu la alamun And he is the sign of the hour. And today's class is devoted to ask the question, how can he be a sign of the last hour? How can anything in his life be recognized as a sign of the last hour when there is still another prophet to come who will not be born for another 600 years? The only way that anything in the life of Nabi Isa can be a sign of the last hour is if there is something connected with his life which has not as yet occurred, which is yet to occur. And we said it has to be the prophecy that he will one day return to this world. And the most powerful voice in history to have prophesied that he will return is the voice of Nabi Muhammad. I don't know when Allah calls me away from this world whether there'll be anyone who will teach this subject with clarity. I don't know. I'm trying and trying and trying to teach the subject with clarity. Now then, when you pick up the Quran today, you will see it does not have the tashkil of Abdullah ibn Abbas. When you pick up the copy of the Quran that Ahmad Raza Khan picked up as well, you will find that it has another tashkil. And that tashkil did not come down from Allah. Human beings put it in. And human beings, if they put it in, then that is not the Quran that Allah is protecting. You have to be a schoolboy, ready to believe that the tashki that human beings inserted in the Quran is divinely protected. Go back to school if you believe in that nonsense. And if human beings put it in, they can make a mistake. And I have found the distance skill for in the who the ilmun lisa when I use the methodology of tafsir al Quran bil Quran I find that there are several ayat bukhamat which are in conflict with this tashkil for in the who the ilmun lisa he cannot be the knowledge of the hour. There is no verse of the Quran which, it, which it, you can establish that this is in conformity in harmony uh, with these ayat uh, uh, muhkamat of the Quran. I'm getting a little bit confused now. The ayat muhkamat of the Quran clearly declare that the ilm of the sa'a is only with Allah. The ilm of the sa'a is only with Allah. And therefore, this is in conflict with the Quran. But the verses of the Quran cannot be in conflict with each other. I'm saying this a hundred thousand times. And therefore, since this tashkil is in conflict with the Quran, it is bogus, it is false. And I want to stand before Allah on judgment day with this recorded in my book that I have declared that this tashkil is bogus, it's false. Now then, having taught this to you, you must now decide what you want to do. Don't question me, because I've already taught the subject. The bogus tashkil has to be rejected. But this morning I have said to you, I have discovered something late in life, something alarming. 
what I have discovered is that everything in the Quran connected with this subject has been subjected to a, an evil attack to try to distort and to corrupt our understanding of the Quran. I've just discovered this late in life. No one ever taught it to me. And the beginning of this process of seeking to corrupt and distort and obstruct us from understanding the Quran is the bogus tashkil in Surah Al-Zukhruf. But today we have more to share with you because they will attendantly emerge in the next few classes. And at the end of the next few classes, you will see that this pattern indicates that an evil force is at work trying to corrupt, to distort, and to obstruct our understanding of the Quran on this all-important subject of the return of the Messiah. Okay, go ahead. Anybody else? Assalamu alaikum. <clears throat> alaikum salam. I'm Yunus from Turkey. <clears throat> from Turkey. Go ahead. Um, I just wanted to say that what you tell us it makes really sense and I have no problem with accepting it but what I can understand is that if this is um, the ilm is bogus, the teshkil, then we would um, have to say that all the um, so many previous scholars and even the Sahaba uh, used the Quran to uh, corrupt it in a way because if it's bogus then it must be false. If then, in that case, then in that case, you don't have to accept what I have done. You just have to reject everything I have taught. You use oh. your rational faculty. And on Judgment Day, you can stand up before Allah and say, I use my rational faculty. And I have come <laughs> to the conclusion that what Imran Hussein has taught is not acceptable, according to my rational faculty. And Allah Ta'ala will respond to you on Judgment Day. Yes, I, have, I, do, I, have made... I do not want you, I do not want you to accept anything I have taught which you are not convinced is correct. And obviously you're not convinced. No, I have already made the change in my Quran to the um, to Ali Mulisa. I well, then I cannot explain. I cannot explain. But what has happened in the past, I can only teach what is the truth. And I have done that. I'm only asking this because then we accept it, we also have to uh, defend it in future, and this will cause too many discussions. What I try to understand is if Allah knows that it could be read both ways, what, then, um, what you have that, to, then... What you have to do is whenever you cannot defend what you have accepted to be the truth, then do not defend it, do not accept it as the truth. This, what I have taught to you, is the truth. I have explained to you that this is a bogus tashkil. But you say, no, but so many others before have accepted it. So how can it be bogus? So then I say, well, don't accept it as bogus. Accept it as the truth. And on judgment day, you stand up before Allah and say, I was not convinced. I was not convinced that it is bogus tashkil. Good, because if I accept it as a bogus tashkil, how could I accept? How can I explain so many people having accepted it before? Good. So that, but, but, just, go ahead. Well, what, what I'm trying to say here is not because uh, the previous ones have so, thought this way. Of course, um, there can be new knowledge and new ideas, but Allah says in the Quran, So is Batil not something like bogus? Um, does Allah not protect any kind of bogus to enter the Quran? Good. Let me ask you a question. I have yes. to ask this question a hundred thousand times. Pity for me. Are the Tashkil a part of the Quran, yes or no? No, not it is not. No. It is not. So why have you why have you quoted this verse of the Quran that Bartil cannot enter into it? Why have you quoted that verse of the Quran when you yourself are convinced that the Tashkil are not a part of the Quran. You already they said are. that the Tashkil is not a part of the Quran. How many times do I have to explain this thing? But when someone is reciting the verse, he cannot just recite like 
um, Ayn Lam Mim, he has to use a teshkil. He has either to say. Yes, I, I recited the Quran all my life. As I did it all my life because nobody ever taught me that this is a bogus teshkil. It is when I went, I came to the subject of Ilmu Akhir Zaman about 25 years ago. When I went to New York, it is only when I went to New York in the early 90s that I began my studies in Akhir Zaman. And it took a long, long time for me to build the subject of eschatology and eventually to recognize that this is a bogus skill. Okay, once I recognize it is bogus, I never recite it anymore as Il Musa. I always recite it as Adam Musa. And then my further duty is to teach others. And if they are convinced that I am correct, then they also will correct it. They will never recite it as Il Musa. They will recite it as Adam Musa. This is all I can do. I can't do more than this. And I've also said about a second Tashkil in the Quran connected with Da Matul Ad, in which the, the present Tashkil says to Kalimuhum that Da Matul Ad will speak to mankind. And I said, no, that's a bogus Tashkil. It is not to Kalimuhum, it's Taklimuhum, meaning that Da Matul Ad will injure, will harm you. Okay? Yes, go ahead. Last thing is because when you said um, that it would be in conflict with the other um, part where Allah says, where in the who il Musa'a. But my uh, question is when we are, would accept, just would accept that Jesus is the knowledge for the hour, can Allah not mean by that the knowledge is with him, that Jesus literally is also with him, and that he will send him down as a concept of knowledge first, that man can understand Akhiru Zaman, and then the real Jesus second? Have I not provided for you several ayat mukhkamat? This is a verse which is plain and clear, several of them, in which Allah Ta'ala has declared that ilmul lissa, ilmul lissa is only with Allah. Has the Quran not said to you? Plainly and clearly that Ilmul Lisa is only with Allah. Why are you dodging and shifting and trying to find a way out when it's plain and clear that Ilmul Lisa is only with Allah? So it cannot be with Nabi Isa Islam. But no, but the verse says that Jesus can be Ilmul Lisa, and then Allah says that in the Il Musa. This could also mean that Jesus is as a knowledge with Then what you are doing, <laughs> I am now I'm repeating and repeating and repeating what I've already taught. Maybe you were not there in the previous classes, my brother. I was I was there. You are not, yes, sir. You are not allowed <clears throat> to interpret the Quran. You are not allowed to interpret the Quran. Unless and until a verse of the Quran is not self-explanatory or it cannot be explained through tafsir al-Quran, bil Quran. It is only when it is not self-explanatory. It cannot be understood in and by itself. Uh, or secondly, you cannot explain the verse with the rest of the Quran, Tafsir al Quran, Bil Quran. Only then, not before, only then can you interpret. But you are rushing to interpret the verse? How can you do that? You are not allowed to interpret the Quran unless and until it cannot be understood by itself. Nor can it be understood through tafsir with tafsir. We have done the work. Ilmul Lisa cannot be understood in and by itself. And when you use tafsir or Quran, bil Quran, it is in conflict with the Quran. 
But you're not willing to accept that. So my brother, you can stay with your Ilmul Quran, Ilmul Lisa. No, 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 I had enough. If you consider this to be a correct scheme, then you stand before Allah on just Monday and don't please spend any more time with me on this. I'm getting fed up now. I've already explained the subject adequately and you are not convinced. So you can stay with that tashkid. We say I'm it's convinced. bogus, but you do not say it's bogus, okay? No, so I'm, you convinced. Stay with... I'm convinced. Please, I'm I've, convinced. Had I've had I'm enough. I've had enough, okay? I've had enough. That... Yes. Yes. Hello. Please, I've had enough. We're wasting time now because I've taught the subject adequately, but you are not convinced. If you are convinced that this tashkid is correct, fine. On judgment day, you stand before Allah and you say to him that I am convinced that this tashkil is correct. Okay? And you see what answer, answer Allah gives you on judgment day. Anybody else before we proceed? Okay. Uh, Sheikh Iman Hussein, this is Roshan okay. again. Last, uh, last before uh, we proceed. Okay. Otherwise, we're not going to Yeah, go ahead. Uh, all right. Well, it is a very important discussion that this? we have. Everybody, this is Roshan is from this? Mauritius again. Who is this? This, this is Roshan from Mauritius again. Yes, Moshan, and Roshan, go ahead. I'm, I'm, I'm very grateful that you're spending time on this ayah because it really. We, we have to, to understand this ayah properly. Now, from my understanding, there is knowledge and there is knower. In Arab, I'm not an Arab, but knowledge means ilm and knower means alim. Now, in this ayah, wa innahu la ilmu sa'a, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, is referring to the knowledge. Knowledge means that we can acquire knowledge. A human being can acquire knowledge, but he is not the knower. He is not the originator of that knowledge. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the originator of that knowledge. But we can acquire knowledge. Roshan. Is that correct? Roshan. Yes. Roshan, may I advise you one thing? Yes. Roshan, here's my advice to you. Since you are not convinced that this is a bogus skill, then why don't you continue with your belief that this is a correct skill? And you stand up before Allah on judgment day and you argue with him that this is a correct skill. Don't argue with me. Roshan, I am convinced that it is bogus and you are not convinced. So don't let us waste any further time, okay? I am convinced it's bogus and it is part of a large scheme of trying to distort and to corrupt and obstruct our understanding of the Quran and the subject of the return of Nabi Isa. This is only the beginning. This is the one, the bogus scheme. There's much more to come. And when the, all of this comes together before you, you will see the pattern. So we are, we are wasting time now. So can we proceed now? Okay, Bismillah. Having disposed of the bogus skill, uh, next week, inshallah, we'll have the we'll have the text from my laptop directly onto the screen. So next week, inshallah. So you'll be able to see. At this time, my head is in the way; you can't see the screen. Uh, having disposed of the bogus tashkil used to corrupt the verse, and having restored the status of that verse as an ayah muhkama of the Quran, we can now proceed to use a single ayah muhkama to explain several ayat mukashamirat of the Quran. And this is it. Allah's wisdom has so arranged the verses of the Quran on the subject of the return of the Mesa Islam. That a solitary ayah mukkara, Surah 4361, can make it possible for us to explain several ayat of the Shabiat of the Quran. Wa innahu la alamun lissa'a. That he, Nabi Isa alayhi islam, he is the sign of the last hour. When we proceed with this subject, however, we discover a mysterious trail of persistent satanic efforts to corrupt 
and distort our understanding of the Quran of the soul. So now we return to our book entitled the Quran. Sorry, the book is the Messiah, the Quran, and Akhirul Zaman. And there is one chapter of that book devoted to this subject. And these verses of the Quran present considerable evidence from the Quran of the miraculous return of the Messiah in Akhirul Zaman. We commence with an examination of the verses which inform us about the crucifixion. This is not only an important event, but also an event in which we can encounter significant difficulty in explaining the Quran. The difficulty is not located within the Quran. No, the, the difficulty is in external roadblocks, which have been mysteriously constructed over time to deter and to corrupt the proper understanding of the Quran. When I look at them, I consider them to be nonsense. But so many people have accepted it. We leave it to the general reader to find out who it is who constructed all these evil roadblocks, obstructing, corrupting, distorting our capacity to understand the Quran. Perhaps the most distressing of all is this manifestly false, yet popular belief in the theory of the substitution that Allah was high. He, that he caused someone else to assume the appearance of Jesus. The Misa al Islam. And it was that innocent man who was crucified instead of Jesus. This belief is not just bogus, not just false, not just frivolous, but also quite dangerous. We turn to the evidence from the Quran that Jesus will return. And here is what we begin with. Every soul must taste mouth. Because Allah says, Kullu nafsin za'ikatul mawt. Za'ika, za'ika. Sometimes it tastes sour. Sometimes it tastes sweet. Za'ika. So, kullu nafsin za'ikatul mawt. Everybody had to taste. Look at the word, eh? Everybody have to taste mouth for death. Because sometimes they're going to taste mouth and it will be terrible. And for others, Allah will decrease the pain of mouth. So Nabi Isa Islam did not die. But, was, but he was raised unto Allah most high. Where's the evidence? Since he did not die, he must therefore return to this world to experience smoke. Yet, like everybody else. Now, Allah Ta'ala has declared, and he has done so emphatically, and he will say that Nabi Isa al-Islam was not crucified. So if you ever hear any schoolboy saying, Imran Hussein said he was crucified, tell the schoolboy, get lost. Get lost. That's the only way to get rid of them. Get lost. Because Allah says, Nabi Isa alayhi salam was not crucified. Even though by divine design, it was made to appear that he was crucified. Now then, here is the tremendously important verse of the Quran. On this one. Listen to the verse of the Quran. 
wa qawlihim inna qatalna al-masiha isa ibn maryam rasulullah wa ma qataluhu wa ma salabuhu wa lakin wa lakin shubbiha lahu wa inna alladhina akhtalafu fihi la fi shakkin min ma lahum bihi min ilm illa ittiba'a az-zan wa ma qataluhu yaqina this is surah an-nisa verse 157 and they boasted Behold, we've killed him. <laughs> the Messiah. They didn't believe he's the Messiah, so this is called sarcasm. We've killed the Messiah, the son of Mary, who claimed that he was a apostle, the messenger of Allah. Oh, Allah said, no, 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 they did not kill him. I don't like the word slay. Kill. They did not kill him. And neither did they crucify him. They did not kill him. They did not crucify him. But it was made to appear to them as such. The Quran says, "Walakin shubbiha lahum." The Quran means it was made to appear unto them that this is what happened. Do you understand that? Don't come to me with any nonsense. This is what the Quran is saying. Don't come to me with any nonsense. The Quran is saying, "Walakin shubbiha lahu." Allah made it appear unto them that they crucified him. No, they did not crucify him. No, they did not crucify him. Rather, Allah made it appear unto them that they crucified. How did Allah do it? You must not answer that question with some Nancy story, some fairy tale. I don't want you to answer that question using your own rational faculty. Let the Quran answer the question. Why do you want to answer the question when Allah has answered it? Don't you have any sense? They did not crucify him. They did not kill him. No, Allah made it appear to them as such. What did Allah do to make it appear to them? Don't come to me with your opinion. I don't want to hear your view. Your view is is irrelevant. I want to hear what does the Quran say to explain because Allah says about the Quran that it is tibian and liquidly shine. That this Quran explains all things. So why don't you allow the Quran to explain to answer the question? How did Allah make it appear to them that he was crucified when he is not? Why do you mean, why are you so stupid to ignore the Quran and come with your own Nancy story? Let the Quran answer the question. I don't want to hear your view. Let the Quran answer the question. Tafsir al-Quran bil-Quran. Is that so difficult to understand? You're rushing to answer the question and you're ignoring and therefore disrespecting the Quran. Let the Quran answer the question. What did Allah do to make it appear to them that he was crucified when he was not crucified? Have I explained myself? Have I guided you correctly now on this subject so you don't make this mistake of rushing like a schoolboy to answer the question? When Allah has answered the question in the Quran, and verily those who hold conflicting views on this subject, they are all confused, having no real knowledge, and following mere conjecture. For for certainty, they did not kill him. They did not kill him. 
فَلْ رَفَعَهُ اللَّهُ إِلَيْهِ كَانَ اللَّهُ عَزِيزًا حَكِيمًا This is the next verse. That really, certainly, Allah raised him unto himself. And Allah is almighty. Allah is wise. So Nabi Isa islam is not in heaven. No. Allah says he's with me. Allah says he's with me. So we must say he is with Allah. Don't say he's in heaven. So, number one. They, that is the Jews, they boasted that they killed Jesus. But no, they did not kill him. That's number one. Number two, they boasted that they crucified him. But in fact, they did not crucify him. That's number two. Number three, Allah made it appear to them that he was crucified. But the reality was different. He was not crucified. These are the three things we have learned so far. Three things. Okay. Now the question is, how did Allah, how did Allah make it appear that they had crucified him? And in fact, they did not crucify him. That's the question. And of course, we don't have any schoolboys in the Zoom session to rush like a schoolboy to give his own opinion. We have good students in this. Good students will go to the Quran for the Quran to answer the question. Okay? We don't have school boys there. In the Quran, it's declared that it explains all things. Not a question to be answered with speculation. Frivolous guesswork. Rather, the Quran will explain. And I was experiencing a heavy shower of rain now. We hear the rain in the background. I, I raised my voice slightly. We can manage it. And the rain is falling. The rain falls, we say, Dua Mustajab. Dua Mustajab. When rain is falling, you make a Dua, and Allah will answer your Dua. So we ask Allah, to protect us in the terrible, terrible time of the virus and the vaccine. I mean, so then it is not true speculation, not true guesswork. The Quran will tell us what did Allah do to make it appear to them that he was crucified. And in fact, he was not crucified. That's the reason. We offer an explanation, not interpretation. If we give an interpretation, we say Allah knows best. But this is not an interpretation, this is an explanation. It appears. Several verses of the Quran on this subject. Now then, in addition to those two verses of the Quran of Surah al Nisa, there are two other passages of the Quran provide additional information on this crucially important explanation of what occurred during the crucifixion. What happened during the crucifixion? How did Allah make it appear that they crucified him when in fact they did not succeed in crucifixion? This is what Allah now says. We've had one, two, three, now we have more. The first message. This is Surah to Ali Imran, I believe, this yes, Ali Imran. It's called Allah, we are Isa. Allah is speaking to Nabi Isa. And this conversation is taking place when they are about to crucify him. And Allah has preserved this conversation in the Quran. The Christian does know. The Jew doesn't know. We know what Allah said to him when they're about to crucify him. 
This is what Allah said. Ya Isa. This is first person. Oh Jesus. Oh Jesus. Allah is speaking to him. Oh Jesus. Inni mutawaffik. Inni mutawaffik. I'm going to cause you to experience something called Wafat. What is Wafat? And when I cause you When I cause you experience something called wafat, I'm then going to raise you unto myself. So you will no longer be in this world. I'm going to raise you unto myself. And I'm going to cleanse you and purify you of all the kufr, the blasphemy they've said about you and your mother. And I'm going to cause those who follow you, oh Jesus, those who follow you, not follow Muhammad, those who follow Jesus, I'm going to raise them a position of dominance in the world. So they'll be dominant over those who rejected you. Who rejected him? The Jews. The Jews today control NATO. The Jewish Christian Alliance. They have control over power in the Western world. But I am going to cause those who follow you to be raised to a position of dominance over them. And when I raise your followers to that position of dominance, they will remain in that position of dominance until Kiyama. So, Quran is telling us those who follow Nabi Isa means his ummah. Those who follow Nabi Isa would be his ummah. Does Imran Hussein follow Nabi Isa Are you crazy? Are you crazy? I don't follow Nabi Isa my name is Muhammad I don't know about you. I know about myself. But when I'm in the grave, when the question is raised to me, who is your Nabi? My answer is my Nabi is Muhammad The Nabi Isa is not my Nabi. My Nabi is Muhammad I don't know about you. I know about myself. So there is an ummah of Nabi Isa alayhi salam to which I do not belong. And that ummah will remain in the world until Qiyamah. Tell the school boy go back to school. Tell the school boy go back to school. Because the school boy said, Everybody has to join the Ummah of Muhammad. There's no other option. You have to be a member of this Ummah. There's no Ummah of Nabi Isa Islam when you return. Tell this schoolboy, get lost. Let us study the Quran. I'm going to raise those who follow you to the position of dominance. Those who rejected him. When I do so, that Ummah of Nabi Isa will remain in the position of dominance until the day of resurrection. In the end, unto me, you must all return. I shall judge between you.
So this message of the Quran took to Ali Imran told us number four. Allah will cause the Isa Islam to experience something called Wafat. And after that, Allah will raise him unto himself. And here is the second passage. This is in Surah Al-Maida. Yes, Maida. Here is what he said. The two verses. It's called Allah, Ya Isa of the Maria. Allah spoke. And again, it's direct speech. Oh, Jesus, the son of Mary. Did you say this to people? Did you say this? Did you tell them to take me and my mother as well beside Allah? Did you say that? Nabi Isa Islam replies, he says, Subhanaka Maka, Maya Kudu, Maya Kudu, Leonard Kudu, Maya Sanibi, the Hak, the Hak. I glory be to thee, O Allah. How could I say something? I had no right to say such a thing. In Kuntu Kultu, who forgot that? If I ever said such a thing, you would know. You know what is in my heart, not say in my heart. I don't know what is in your heart. In the kind of Allah, you feel you have knowledge and be unseen. Oh Jesus, the son of Maria, did you say unto men, worship me and my mother as gods in the relation to Allah? If you say glory to you, never could I say what I had no right to say. And I said such a thing. You would indeed have known it. You know what is in my heart, and I do not, do not know what is in your heart. For you will know in full all that is in Now the next verse. It is Surah Al-Maidah. Ma kultu lahum illa ma amartani bihi. I never said anything other than what you ordered me to say. And ni'abudullah rabbi wa rabbakum. The new that, I sh that you should worship Allah who is your Rabb and my Rabb. And I was a witness amongst them so long as I lived amongst them. When you caused me to experience wafat, then became the watcher over them. You have knowledge. You have power over all. This is Al-Maidah, verse 117 and 116 and 117. Never did I say to them anything other than what you commanded me to say. It, Worship Allah, my Lord, and your Lord. And I was a witness over them while I dwelt amongst them. But when you took, when you caused me to experience Wafat, then I left this world. And you were then the watcher over them, and you witnessed all things. So now we know from the above two passages of the Quran, we know two more things concerning the crucifixion. Number one, they did not kill him. Number two, they did not crucify him. Number three, Allah made it appear unto them like that. Number four, Allah Ta'ala took the nafs. What is nafs? The Quran uses the word jism as the physical body, jism. And sometimes he uses the word badan for the physical body. I don't know the difference between jism and badan. Maybe someone of my students here would do the research and tell me the difference between jism and badan. But the word nafs refers to the self, the soul. And ruh refers to the spirit. 
And Allah breathed of his ruh into us and we got life. وَنَفَخْتُ فِيهِ مِنْ رُوحِ Allah breathed his ruh into us. That is the spirit. So jism or badan is the physical body. Ruh is the spirit. But the human being, which will stand before Allah for judgment on judgment day, we should enter into Jannah or enter into Jahannam, is the nafs. But Allah always gives the nafs a body. <laughs> so when we lose this body, you get another body. So now, Allah says, at the time of the crucifixion, he, he says, I took the nafs of Nabi Isa. This is the nafs. And when Allah took the nafs of Nabi Isa, Allah then raised him unto himself. So, Wafat is to take the soul. Wafat is to take the soul. When Allah declared, I will cause you to experience Wafat, context is such that Wafat can only mean one thing I am going to take your soul. That is Wafat. Those who judge, in Arabic text, explain and translate otherwise, are guilty of betrayal of the text of the Quran. I told you, there is a consistent pattern, pattern of corruption, of distortion, of seeking to obstruct the meaning of the Quran. Here is one of them again. But the word wafat means to take the soul at the time of death. And Allah says twice in the Quran, I am going to take your soul. Those who try to give it another meaning, they're dodging the text, the context as well. And they do so in order to be able to advance their bogus substitution theory. This is disrespect for the word of Allah and therefore disrespect for Allah. So they translate the word Wafat as, Oh Jesus, I will take you <laughs> and raise you unto myself. That's wrong. That is not the meaning. They disregard the clear and unambiguous connection in several verses of the Quran between Wafat, that is Allah taking the soul, and Maut, which is Allah taking the soul and not reserving it, which is death. There's a connection between the, the two. Wafat and Maut are connected with each other. So what is Wafat? And what is mouth? There is a similarity between the process through which we die and the process through which a divorce takes place. Similar. <laughs> In order for a divorce to take place, the process must begin with a pronouncement of talak. But wait a minute. If I make a pronouncement of talak, is the process completed? Where is the schoolboy? Where is he? Call him back here. He's a schoolboy. Who says the process is already completed? No. There is a process, and the process begins with the pronouncement of talak. After the pronouncement of talak, you have to wait for something called the idda. 
the period of waiting. And when the Inda period concludes, it finishes without a revocation of the talaq, now the process has ended. She's not your wife anymore. You can't even touch her. So there is a process. And the pronouncement of talaq simply initiates, begins the process. That's all. It doesn't repeat it. Similarly, death is a process. <laughs> yeah, like a divorce, death is a process. And the process commences, it begins with Allah causing wafat. Assalamu alaikum, Mr. may I ask a question? Hold on, hold on. A funeral passing or wedding? One of the other. Oh, let me just finish this. The death is a process. And death is similar to a divorce, a process. That you have to begin the process and continue until the process ends. And in a divorce, you begin the process with the pronouncement of talaq. And the process does not end until the Idda period has ended without any revocation of the talaq. Then the process has ended. Similarly with death. The death begins, the process of death begins with wafat. And wafat is to take the soul. When Allah takes the soul, when Allah takes the soul, that does not mean that death has occurred. No. When Allah takes the soul, that is the beginning of the process. But later on, we we'll see as we proceed with this lecture. That the Quran itself, in a few verses, when it uses the word wafat, it means death. <laughs> huh? But we have to be careful with proper methodology. Because Allah says, don't take any verse of the Quran in isolation. No? Or you can make a mistake. So I'll give you the verses where wafat means death. But then you'll find other verses will give you more clarity with this subject. That wafat is the taking of the soul, and that does not mean that the process of death is yet completed. Okay? Wafat is the taking of the soul. It simply initiates the process, it begins the process, which does not conclude unless and until Allah Ta'ala most high decides to keep the soul. If he decides to return the soul rather than to keep it, then the process will not conclude with death. Here is the provide the evidence we provide from Surah to Zumar that death is a process which commences with Wafa, the taking of the soul. And this process is not completed until Allah Ta'ala decrees death. When he decrees death, he keeps the soul. And when he does not decree death, he turns the soul. The reader must, must carefully note that whenever Allah takes the soul, that is was hard. The process usually culminates with death or mouth. The father, I want you to reflect over the three verses of the Quran I'm going to quote now. There are more than three in which wafat is used for death. There we are.
reader should reflect on the following three verses of the Quran. Where the words wafat, taking of the sword and out. Oh, no, no, sorry, my, my, my mistake. Here are three verses where the word wafat and the word mouth are constantly joined together. Allah yatawaffa al-anfusahina mawtiha. Notice the word hina. Careful, eh? Take a careful note of the word hina. Because we're going to need this in another class coming up. Hina means at the time. At the time, hina. When you're dying. Hina al mawt at the time when death is taking place. Hubble means before. Hubble al mawt means something that occurs before death. But hina al mawt means something which is occurring at the time of death. Don't forget it because this is going to be very important in another class that's coming up later. So Allah says, at the time when death is to take place, at that time, Allah takes the soul. Allah yatawaffal anfus. Anfus means the plural of nafs. And nafs is your soul. So Allah takes the soul at the time of death. No. Uh, takes your soul. So there are two things here. One is wafat, and the next is mouth. Mm -hmm. And you can't have mouth unless you have wafat. You first have wafat, and then you can have mouth. And Allah takes your soul at the time when you're going to have mouth. Taking my time to explain. But nobody else is explaining. And now the next verse about women who are engaged in what it was lesbianism. And you have the evidence about that. Then Allah said, put them under house arrest. Put them under house arrest. And let them remain there. Hatta. But you, they must remain there until until mouth occurs with wafat. There we are. <laughs> until wafat takes place and the wafat concludes with mouth. See the two words are combined. Wafat and mouth. And now the third verse combining wafat and mouth. وَهُوَ الْقَاهِرُ فَوْكَ عِبَانِي وَيُرْسِلَ عَلَيْكُمْ حَفَذَةً حَتَّى إِذَا جَاءَ أَحَدَكُمْ الْمَوْتِ تَوَفَّتْهُ رُسُلُنَا وَهُمْ لَا يُفَرْحِتُونَ It's a very beautiful verse. That Allah alone has control of His servants. Allah is alone. And He sends heavenly forces, angels, to watch over you. Until when the moment of death arrives, of any of you, any of you, then our messengers take your soul for fat, and then completes the process by not returning the soul. And they do not overlook anyone. Everybody has to take that. Now then, in these three verses, we saw how Wafat and Maut are connected. You first have wafat and then you have mouth. Wafat is the taking of the soul and mouth is when Allah takes the soul and does not return it. 
But I'll hear uh, three other verses where he uses the word Wafat alone and doesn't use the word mouth, but he means mouth. Rabbana innana sami'ana munali and yunali liriman. Oh, our Rabb, we have heard the cry, the call. One who is calling us to Iman. And Aminu Birobikum telling us to have faith in our Rabb. Twamanna. And so Allah, we faith, we have faith, we believe in you. Rabbana, fulfill Lana. Oh Allah, can you forgive us our sins? Wakafir Anna Sayyatina. And uh, and he face our bad deeds. I don't know why they okay. sure. erase <laughs> our bad deal. Kafiranna Sayyatina. What a wafana. What a wafana. Muslimi. What a wafana. Muslimi. One more time. What a wafana. There we are. وَتَوَفَّنَا مَعَ الْأَبْرَارِ Sorry. And grant that we might die the righteous. And the word wafat combines both taking the soul and death. And so this is why some scholars were misguided. Because they accepted here that once you have wafat, it's death. Once you see wafat, you mean that. That's what they thought. Because here the word wafat includes both taking the soul and death. Here's another example. That was Ali Imran. Yes, that was Ali Imran. Rabbana Afrika Alina Sabra, Rabbana Afrika Alina Sabra, whatever Fana Muslimin, whatever Fana Muslimin. You take vengeance on us only because we have come to believe in our Lord God messengers. So they came to us, oh Lord, shower on us, shower us with patience in adversity and make us die. And make us die as people who have surrendered themselves and believe. So they hear the word wafat, mean both taking the soul and death. And here's the third verse. And this is Surah to you, Yusuf. Very, very powerful verse of Surah to Yusuf. Rabbi kad ataytani min al Rabbi kad ataytani min al mulk wa allamtani min ta'wil al ahadis. This is a good answer. Fatir is samawati wal ard. Anta wali fi dunya wal akhir. Tawafani musliman wal hikni bisalihi. This is now. A third example, the word wafat, meaning both taking the soul and death. Oh, my Lord God, thou hast indeed bestowed upon me something of power and imparted unto me some knowledge of the internal meaning of things, originate of the heavens and the earth. Thou art near unto me in this world and the life to come. Let me die as one who has surrendered himself unto thee. And make me one of the righteous. So three verses of the Quran in which Allah has used the word wafat, and it means both taking the soul and death. And I gave you three verses previously where wafat and mouth are combined together. Three. So now then. We can now explain why the Jews were convinced 
that they had killed Nabi Isa and that he died by crucifixion. What did Allah do? To make it appear unto them that he was crucified when he was not. The schoolboy is rushing down the road with his explanation. But the sensible one said, no, let me find out what the Quran says. Tell the schoolboy, come back and go to school. What does the Quran say? Here is what the Quran says. That Allah made it appear unto them that he was crucified when he was not. The Jews were justified in coming to that conclusion that he was crucified. Since Allah took the soul of Jesus before their very eyes while he was on the cross. While he was on the cross. The schoolboy said, no, 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 he was never on the cross. Tell the schoolboy, get lost. Tell the schoolboy, get lost. Tell the schoolboy, get lost. You know, he was never on the cross. He was never on the cross. <laughs> I don't have time for schoolboys. No. The Jews were justified in coming to that conclusion. Conclusion. Since Allah took the soul of Jesus, Allah, before their very eyes while he was on the cross. In other words, they saw him with their very eyes give up the ghost, which is a usual expression for dying while he was on the cross. There are those who object to the above while arguing, Jesus was never put on the cross. No, 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 he was never put on the cross. They advance their bogus substitution theory that it was someone else who was made to resemble him, who was put on the cross, and it was that innocent man rather than Jesus who was crucified. Here is further evidence of a satanic effort to corrupt, to distort, and to obstruct the proper meaning of the Quran. It began with the most important one of all, the bogus scheme. And now it continues with this bogus theory of substitution. No, 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 he was never put on the cross. No, 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 it was someone else. Allah made it. Well, that be laughing at it. Allah made someone else to take on the appearance of Jesus. And that man was put on the cross and he was crucified. On judgment day, you'll have to answer for that nonsense. What remains to be explained is how did the appearance of death of Jesus, the appearance of death, which was established in the event of Allah taking his soul, how did that differ from the reality? No, he was not risen. They saw him give up the ghost. They saw Allah take his soul. So they were convinced he was dead. But Allah said, no, no, they did not crucify him. I made it appear like that to them. So what did Allah do to make it appear that he was crucified when he was not? We have to explain what happened after Allah took his soul. Wafat is to take the soul. And twice did Allah say, I took his soul. If he took his soul, what did he do? Every Jew and every Christian would be keenly interested in learning what the Quran has to say on this subject. But let us first respond to the bogus substitution theory before we attempt to locate in the blessed Quran what that which explains reality on the subject. I may not have enough time answer the question today. What did Allah do to make it appear that he was crucified when he was not crucified? Because I have to now deal with this bogus substitution theory the way I dealt with the bogus test 
We don't have enough time when Prada gives life and next week we'll deal with it and so It is to be profoundly regretted that many Muslims, including learned scholars, have made the mistake of accepting the theory of substitution as the explanation for what occurred to Jesus. According to this theory, Allah most high for someone to assume the physical appearance of Jesus. And it was that innocent man. It was that innocent man. Why innocent? Because he never claimed to be the Messiah. He was crucified. The theory of substitution does, thus declares the following concerning Allah Most High. And it does so without a shred of evidence in support. Number one, Allah Most High caused someone to assume the appearance of Jesus. And that man, instead of Jesus, was crucified. Number two, Allah, <laughs> Allah Most High caused an innocent man, an innocent man who never claimed to be the Messiah. He never claimed to be the Messiah. And he was crucified for claiming to be the Messiah. He never claimed to be the Messiah, but he was crucified for claiming to be the Messiah. Our response is to dismiss this theory as false. There is no support for it in the Quran. Those who seek support from the book of Allah argue that since the Quran declared that Jesus was not crucified, they can deduce their from This is deduction that he was never put on the cross. This is deduction, a bogus deduction. For him, for them to hold this view, however, they are forced to embrace that theory of substitution. As someone else who was a Jesus lookalike was crucified instead of Jesus. You know, some people resemble each other. Many people write to me, say, Sheikh, you resemble my grandfather. <laughs> you, you resemble my dad, you resemble my dad. Many people write to me. Yes. We have resemblance, okay? So there was someone who had was a Jesus lookalike, exact the same face, same figure. And that fellow was held and they crucified him. So we begin our analysis that if there was a Jesus lookalike in Jerusalem, everybody would know it. Everybody will know it. this man resembled Jesus because Jesus is a very famous man in Jerusalem. Very famous because he, he, he is resisting and challenging the rabbis. Oh, yes. And the poor and the lowly people, they are attracted to him. And he says that I am the Messiah. That makes news all over Jerusalem. So if there was someone who resembled Jesus, everybody would know that. How then was it possible that no one, no one ever saw this look-alike of Jesus before the event of the crucifixion? No one saw it. Where did he come from? <laughs> did he drop from the sky? Advocates of this theory of substitution, they had to the difficulty when they declared, oh no, no, it's Allah who caused him at the appearance of Jesus. And this took place at the time just before the crucifixion. So Allah did it. This belief in a Jesus lookalike may have been taken foolishly so from a severely doctored Italian version of the Gospel of Barnabas. History goes back to the 16th and 17th century. And this Barnabas declares that Judas was transformed by Allah 
to look like Jesus. Here is what the Prospera Barnabas said. This is Italian version. Eh? Jesus entered impetuously before all into the chamber where Jesus, where Jesus had been taken up, and the disciples were sleeping. Whereupon the wonderful God acted wonderfully, insomuch that Judas was so changed in speech and in face to be like Jesus, and we believed him to be Jesus. <laughs> so Barnabas is saying, Allah raised Jesus. And when Allah raised Jesus, when Judas entered the room, Allah caused Judas to look like Jesus. Huh? So everybody believed this was Jesus. This is the doctor Balkospel of Allah. But the same document which declared hilariously so that the Messiah would come from the seed of Ishmael rather than the house of Amran. Our readers should know that, this, that there is another document called the Epistle of Barnabas, which is a much older document and which is in Greek, not Italian. And it makes no mention of any Jesus lookalike, big pussy bad in his face. Our response is to warn that this theory attributes an unjust act to Allah most high. And as those who stubbornly cling to this bogus explanation, was prepared to defend themselves on Judgment Day. Don't argue with me. If you accept this substitution theory, don't argue with me. Rather, prepare yourself to defend yourself on Judgment Day. This theory of substitution, which has been uncritically accepted by many Muslims, including many scholars, conflicts with the divine standard of absolute justice established in the Quran, which declared that no soul will ever bear the burden of another soul. And so, say, am I then to seek a Lord God other than Allah when he's the Lord God of all things? And whatever wrong any human being commits rests upon himself alone. And no bearer of burden should be made to bear another person's burden. And in time on to Allah, you will all return and he will make you understand all those things which you deferred. This theory of substitution has also attributed to Allah Most High an act of injustice, since by virtue of an alleged divine act, an innocent man paid with his life for a claim which he never made. It will most certainly be unjust for someone to be crucified for having claimed to be the Messiah when he never made such a claim. Allah Most High has emphatically declared that he is never unjust to anyone. In Allah, Allah unjustly by as much as even the weight of an ant. And if there was a good deed, he will multiply it and bestow his grace a mighty reward. In other words, Judgment past for me shall not be also. Never do I do the least injustice unto my creature. In the law, I have been a Nasa, Shaya, but I can the Nasa and push on me as a moon. Surely Allah does not ever act unjustly unto anyone but his men who wrong themselves. So those who declare the above act of divine justice to have occurred will be asked by Allah on judgment day to provide the evidence that he ever acted in a way which they declared about him. That he caused someone else to assume the appearance of Jesus. And that man was crucified in Jesus. When they then offer the evidence in the form of frivolous guesswork and assumption, they will learn that they were mistaken and they committed a horrible sin. 
of making a false and unjust statement concerning Allah. They told a lie against him. Now then, I don't think we have time to proceed to the explanation in the Quran. Allah said, I made it appear to them that he was crucified, that they crucified him. But no, they did not do it. I made it appear to them. So we'll stop here and leave it until tomorrow, next week, with the explanation from the Quran, what it is that happened at the crucifixion which made it appear that Jesus was crucified when in fact he was not crucified. But I want to now give, it, give a chance to those of you who are on this Zoom session who still believe that the theory of substitution is correct. Give you a chance to defend yourself and explain yourself. Because I am saying that this theory of substitution is bogus it's fraudulent and it attributes an act of injustice to Allah. In fact, it is nonsense. And I am saying furthermore that when Allah says wafat for Jesus, wafat is the process of death being commenced. But the, the process of death commences with wafat, the taking of the soul, but it does not conclude until Allah chooses to keep the soul return it. When he chooses to keep the soul, then mouth occurs. But if Allah chooses to return the soul, then mouth does not occur. So when you translate the Quran, and Allah says, I took the soul of Nabi Isari, I'm going to take your soul. You have to explain what did Allah do after he took the soul of Jesus. We leave this for the next class, inshallah. And now we have uh, time for continuing our questions and answers. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Assalamu Sheikh. Go ahead. So Sorry, I was going to ask a question. This is Mohammed from Manchester. Thank you very much for the explanation. Ustad um, Iman, I wanted to ask you about the verses to Al Ma'idah when Allah SWT is speaking to Isa alayhi salam in the first person and he says something very curious that you know what is in my nafs, says you mentioned the heart, but I do not know what is in your nafs. I find that very curious way to speak to Allah directly. What, I feel as though there is a consequence behind it, but I've never understood what it is. Because if Allah asks you something, have you said this? And you say, yeah, subhanaka, I, ne I would never say such a thing. Why then would he go on to say that you know what is in my nafs, but I do not know what is in your nafs? Have you ever looked into it on a deeper level, what it could mean? Yeah, you take a less with your question. What I describe is the commanding, the commanding acts of marriage. This is not the ordinary level of marriage. This is the commanding heights of marriage. Um, that Allah has enough. And Allah has a roof. And I have to walk very, very carefully now that I do not overstep my limit because I have limited knowledge compared to my teacher, <laughs> Fadlur Rahman and Sari. So there are others far more learned than I am. And I leave it to them to give an explanation where I am inadequate. I know my limitation. Now then. But Allah says, وَنَفَقْتُ فِيهِ مِنْ رُوحِ I breathed into Adam alayhis salam of my ruh. So the Quran is informing us that Allah has a roof. 
And then, you know what is in my nuts, and I do not know what is in your nuts. The Quran, again, is informing us that Allah has a nuts. What are the implications of these two things? When Allah says about him, Lays, Laysa ka mislihi shay. There's nothing like unto Allah. Walam yakun lahu kufu'an ahala. No one is comparable to Allah. I, I have to confess, I would prefer not to comment in this set on a subject that is so critically important that it belongs to the commanding heights of money. And I prefer to be allowed to write on the subject so I can write and choose my words with great, 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 great care that I don't fall into the mistake of overstepping my limits on this subject. So you have to excuse me. I've said all I can say on the subject. Go ahead, next one. So, go ahead. Okay. With it. Waiting. Aslam is my Sir, I'm from India. And uh, I wanted to share one thing. Uh, when you taught us the subject of Tashkeel related to Ayat in Nahu La Alamul Lissa, uh, firstly, it was very difficult for me to understand it and to digest it. But later, uh, because I have to you know, search on that topic, then I just found out that the Tashkeel were given after the Khilaf of Ali Rizalatala and who. And, uh, and when it was introduced into the Quran, then the original copy of the Quran, which was with the wife of Prophet وسلم, was burnt so that the Ummah cannot be distorted. And then I realized that uh, it can be corrupted. And uh, the same thing that happened about the um, uh, distortion distortion of the Quran by breaking it into uh, bits and pieces and dividing Surah Bakra into several parts. This also took place after after me, um, me in the, me, after some years of that. So I realize I realize that the original text, the original Quran, is preserved for the people who think, and uh, for those and obviously the satanic forces will always be there to corrupt the Quran, and we have to think. That is all I wanted Perfect. to share. Right. You have any question? No, 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 Shay. No question. Okay, fine. Next. Hello. Hello, I go to that. Hello, Salaam Alaikum. Yeah, this is Badara. I'm calling from Guinea. This is in West Africa. From Guinea? In West yeah. Africa? Yes, Manchala. please, sir. Go ahead. Uh, it's a great pleasure to, to be. My question is, uh, Sheikh, of the, about the difference between uh, Shaitan and uh, 
um, for us, Pringashi. Difference between is my brother from Guinea. What's your question? Walk. Yes. I mean, is one working on the leadership for someone or are independent? I'm a little bit confused of the gel and uh, maybe my connection. Your connection is bad. Yeah, I mean, I, my connection maybe is not. From Guinea, go ahead, we're listening to you. We lost him. Okay, next. Go ahead. Assalamu alaikum. It's Amir Adams from Cape Town in South Africa. Yes, I can recognize from his accent. Yes, how are you? Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, Sheikh. Hope Sheikh is doing well as well. And uh, as uh, I'm only uh, 21 years old and have been greatly inspired by Sheikh's um, lectures and so forth. And many years ago, I think five years, uh, approximately 2015, around about, Sheikh was here, but hoping that uh, as the people of Cape Town, Sheikh will one, once again come to Cape Town, inshallah. But yes, my I would question, love to come, but uh, I don't know whether I can travel with all the vaccine. Indeed, indeed, Sheikh. I, my I was saying last year, uh, I was saying that perhaps I might take the Russian vaccine, but now mm. I realize that the Russians as well, I see, they don't understand what's happening. Although correct, they have correct. a good heart, yeah. So I'm not going to take the Russian vaccine. Go ahead. Indeed, Sheikh. I just wanted to um, ask Sheikh the question when Sheikh mentioned earlier about Surah Zumar with regards to uh, when no, no, Sheikh quoted no the ayah. There's no Surah Zumar. No Surah Zumar. There's Surah to Zumar. Go ahead. Surah to Zumar, yes. Okay. I wanted to ask when Sheikh quoted the ayah with regards to Wafat as well as Maut being uh, mentioned in the same ayah and some ayah where Wafat only was mentioned. I wanted to ask Sheikh about the ayat where only wafat is mentioned. Can that also refer to sleep in, in certain sense? This is, the verse our... that we, yeah, this is the verse that we will explain in the next session, inshallah. Uh, what is it that Allah Ta'ala did to make it appear that he was crucified when in fact he was not crucified. So please wait for next session. Okay? Shukran. Okay. Next. Well, next. Sheikh. Can you hear me? Don't I'm uh, Muhammad Akwa from England, Manchester. From Manchester. Go ahead. Yeah, my question to you is um, where exactly do people get this theory of substitution from in the first place? It just crossed my mind. That, does it hold any, like, what, did it, I, is it grand, did, any kind of I evidence? I did make an to explain. I said that the theory of substitution is to be found in a gospel of Barnabas. One version of that gospel is in Italian. And it came into the world uh, through the Vatican, later, later on through the Vatican. But it's been there since the 16th century. But another version of that same gospel of Barnabas is in Greek. And I have my friends, my colleagues, Orthodox Christians who know the Greek language, yes, and who teach the gospel. And the Greek version of Barnabas does not have this nonsense that is to be found in the Italian version that Allah took up Nabi Isa Islam. He took Jesus up. And then Judas entered into the room. And when Judas entered into the room, then Allah Ta'ala caused Judas to assume the appearance of Jesus. And Judas, who never claimed to be the Messiah, he was crucified. It is, it is from the Gospel of Barnabas we can find one of the evidence of where this theory of substitution originated. There may be others as well, 
but I'm giving you one. Yes, go ahead. Thank you, Jazakallah Sheikh. I love granny more wisdom, more insight. Thank you very much. Anybody else? Okay. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Yes. This is Ijaz Ahmed from India. From India. Uh, so, uh, so regarding the previous uh, the discussion about the Tashkil, so I am convinced with your opinion. Like for example, you have already mentioned regarding the ten major signs of the last day. So in that return of the Jesus is one of the major signs. So that that clearly indicates to us that the alam is the right word instead of ilm. So that is one opinion which I would like to share. Yes. And apart from that, yes. Uh, so, so apart from that, Sheikh, uh, I have just uh, uh, dedicated my time the, the last week regarding this the interpretation of the word minsa. So what I found it was uh, like it was not being connected with the electromagnetic radiation. So what I felt, what the, it was my opinion. What I felt is like. When Sulaiman Alaihissalam was died, it was not been uh, uh, been revealed or not indicated to the jinns until the Abutul Earth. It it attacked and make them forget and make them forget implies to me like they it will uh, the attack of the Abutul Earth will result in making them uh, uh, lose their memory. The jinn, I'm not speaking about the staff or anything. The jinn will lose their memory. Because of that, the next line, it says, when when it fell down. So which means once it attacked, they got paralyzed and the jinn fell down. Then at that moment of time, the jinn realized, yes, we have not uh, followed the command of Allah to only uh, work for Suleiman. Instead, we worked for someone else. And it also implies they realized that Suleiman was already died. So this is the this is what the verse clearly indicates to me because when I reference to other verse which which is related to Dabbatul Earth, it also says that it also uh, informs the same that Dabbatul Earth will takli mukum which is it also attacks the uh, uh, Banu Yisraelite which I I feel it links to Gog and Magog. So we know in Hadith like when Gog and Magog will be killed, it's like Allah will send. A virus or something which the, it will at, attack the back of their spine and they will fall paralyzed and they will uh, die. So, which implies to me the Abbatul Earth could not be an electromagnetic radiation. It implies to me a virus which Allah has preserved it as a surprise element for those jinn and also the mankind who are Gog and Magog who work for Dajjal. So, this is my opinion. So, I'm just uh, looking Whenever for your comments. Anyone has read my book on the subject and uh, has a different view from mine concerning uh, uh, Minsa, the staff of Suleiman and concerning Jabatul Al. Instead of arguing your case with me or sending me big long documents that I don't have time to read, and asking me to read your documents. Please, what you should do is to write your statement, write your thesis as a document or as a book and publish it. And let my students and let others read and assess what you have said. And then we we'll determine whether or not what you have said is acceptable or not, okay? But if you send your documents to me, there are hundreds of people, hundreds literally, who want to give a different view of the subject than I am. And all of them want me to study their documents. I can't do it. All right. So I've listened to what you have said. And I want to advise you, put down your views in writing in a scholarly way and publish it. Okay. Thank you. Next one. Hello. Hello, Assalamu Alaikum. Assalamu Alaikum. Wa Alaikum Assalam. Yeah, it's good. Uh, but I can 
from uh, from Guinea, I couldn't convey my question. I don't know if you can hear me now. Guinea. Can you hear me now from yes, Guinea yes, or uh, my network is still bad? Go ahead, yes. Yeah. Um, you were be saying that uh, in your in your intervention, uh, a verse that was implying that uh, Allah, uh, it, uh, Allah has a nafs like when uh, Jesus, alayhi salatu wasalam, said uh, that uh, you know what is in uh, my nafs and uh, I don't know what is in your nafs. I couldn't be uh, recording that really shared. I had a question about that, but uh, uh, maybe if you can kindly uh, elaborate on this or I will catch up. Thank you very much. Since I couldn't communicate. You want me to offer more explanation than I have done so far on this verse of the Quran, which is in Surah al -Maida. You know what is in my nafs, but I do not know what is in your nafs. But I'm sorry I cannot proceed any further in a, in a lecture. If I am to offer any further comment, it will have to be based upon something that I will write. So I'll be able to choose my language very, very carefully because I do not want to step. Make one step, which is a wrong step. This is a subject which is located in the commanding heights of knowledge. This is not an ordinary subject. Okay, next one. Um, Sheikh Salaam Alaikum, Yasin Muhammad here. Yasin from India? Yes, I am. This is the Yasin who is, um, who is managing the books? Yes. <laughs> MashaAllah. MashaAllah. I have to inform you. Uh, this Yasin has, MashaAllah, done a magnificent job uh, for me. All my books have been printed in India. All the books have been printed in India in English. And Yasin is now publishing my books in Urdu and doing it in uh, Malayalam and in Tamil. May Allah bless Yasin again. And uh, the price at which the books is sold in India is a very affordable price uh, for the Indian Muslims. So may Allah bless Yasin. Go ahead, Yasin. Um, yeah. Um, Sheikh, before I ask a question, I wanted to share something um, that I feel it is important. Um, so uh, what I observe with, with subject of uh, Isa alayhi salam is the toughest tests Allah gave to humanity is through Jesus. So his birth and his ascension to Allah. And now the big one is coming, whether I don't know whether we will be witnessing it or uh, our uh, you know youngsters are going to witness it, his return. So a, a real person with real knowledge and a pure heart is, are the ones who succeeded in these tests, understanding his miraculous birth, understanding his ascension with related to crucifixion, right? So all, all those who doesn't have this, maybe, right, I, I, I take them as just us. It's too difficult for them to uh, uh, understand this and accept this. So now the Jal is seriously at work to make everything dumb enough, or in other words, make them just us, to make it too difficult to accept his miraculous return. So um, I think this is what, uh, you know, uh, 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 his mission, uh, um, for now that you know he is succeeding and your work of explaining all of these details with, with reference to quran in the ayah from the ayahs of quran 
I feel this is the cleanup process of all that corruption the jal is putting into our hearts. So I, I, I see people, it, it is too difficult for too many to even to allow it to their mind and give it a thought, then ponder upon, then come to a judgment. So even they lack that patience, this is an indication that they, they are subject to the already subject to the corruption of the job. So this realization will only come with continuous recitation of Suratul Kaf every Juma. So this is my experience so far. So having said that, having 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 said that, now I I, I want I want to ask you this question in interest of there are so many beginners, Sheikh, and who are very serious, uh, you know, to pursue knowledge, and uh, uh, you know, uh, from on their behalf, I, I ask them to where is what should be the beginning point to 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 uh, uh, you know what is the first step they should take, uh, you know, to gain, uh, you know, to, to start understanding all of this, uh, 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 what is going on, and then be prepared to accept the real Jesus, not the Jesus. Jesus. So, uh, 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 you know, how they can prepare and where they can begin from. Thanks, Sheikh. Okay. All right. Yasin, it was 19... Uh, 65, this is uh, 55, 56 years ago. Maulana Fadlur Rahman Ansari, Rahimahullah, my beloved teacher, was giving a lecture. I was just 23 years of age and had just become his student. And he was lecturing on uh, what the modern Western world has done. And he said they did, they did not only colonize us politically, they did not only embrace us with economic colonization, he said they also colonized us intellectually. He called it the colonization of the mind. And I have a dear student in Kashmir, and she has written an essay, um, and I began to read that essay, and I found, I found that she was saying the very same thing that my teacher said 55, 56 years ago, that the world has experienced the colonization of the mind. And you have uh, said that these are jasads. And uh, indeed, this is part of Allah's gift to me, that I was able to recognize that the jasad who was shown sitting on the throne of Suleiman alayhi salam, uh, in Surat Asfad was actually Dajjal. And if Dajjal is a Jasad, it follows that it is his mission to transform all the rest of mankind into Jasad like himself. Uh, we sometimes use the terminology of the Quran that they are sheep and cattle and goats and camels, meaning they have eyes and they can't see, they have ears and they can't hear, they have hearts and they don't understand, they are people with only external knowledge, they are internally blind. And the process through which we can recover our capacity for internal sight and for basar 
and to be able to see what others cannot see so that we are not just that. That process is, it begins with the con continuous recitation of the Quran from cover to cover, completing your Jews every day. And uh, today is the sixth day here in Trinidad, the sixth day of Jumadi al Akhira. Uh, and so today our Jews was Suratul. Anybody? Araf. 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 Correct. Yeah. Suratul Araf is our Jews. For today, if you do not know how to recite the Quran in Arabic, stop where you are. Nothing, nothing, nothing is more important at this time than to start to learn. Get someone to teach you. And pray to Allah to make it easy for you to learn to recite the Quran in Arabic. When you are reciting the Quran every day and the recitation of the Quran brings peace to your heart, brings comfort to your heart. The day you don't recite the Quran, you are restless. Then one day you will also begin to study the Quran. And when you are both reciting and studying the Quran using proper methodology, then one day you will fall in love with the Quran. Someone who is in love with the Quran will never be a Jesuit. And my students, who inshallah, I am praying that the last shower of rain to come be from my students, inshallah. The prophet said, My ummah is like the rain. Ummati al matar. My ummah is like the rain. I don't know which shower, yeah, you draw. I don't know which shower is better, awaluhu or akhiru, the first or the last. Hmm? So you will not be a jasad, no. You will, inshallah, be a people with basar, ahlul basar, people who can see with insight. And you'll be able to understand the world today, you'll be able to penetrate what the Quran has offered to explain the world. And as Yasin has said, you will not be a Jesus. I pray to Allah that my students will be like that. We have now run out of time for today. Uh, no more questions, I'm sorry for today. But remember, in two hours, no, in uh, is our past 12, at two o'clock, an hour and a half from now, we'll again be on Zoom. And we'll be dealing with the subject of the, vac the virus, the vaccine, the masjid, and the market, inshallah. So until then, salam alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. We love you, Sheikh. Salam alaikum. 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 Salam alaikum.